Hey, Adam. Seen little Joe? No, no sign of him. No reckon he went back to the ranch. Nah, he's about a handsome old girl who couldn't resist his boyish charm. <laughs> Good notion to take your friend on over there for free. Yeah, well, don't let me stop you. It's just my brother. Still say I could have stuck with you for four rounds. Yeah, well, we'll try it again sometime when your old mate ants aren't around. All right, boys, drinks on Dave Donovan. We didn't know you had a bet with that feller. You think you could ask me first before you'd butt your nose in and make a fool out of me in front of everybody? It's not we made a mistake. <clears throat> you never get sore. You've been fighting all over town. Look, it's my life and I like it. Now, I don't tell you what to do. I don't want you to tell me what to do. Stop drinking my beer. I want you to quit following me around. Joe, there ain't nobody following you around. First of all, we ain't got the strength. We just came to tell you Paul wants to see you. And what about? He just wants to see you, that's all. Yeah, well, you tell Pod. Tell him what, little brother? Yeah. What's the message? Tell Paul I'll be coming along. A few more drinks. Let you boys along, but I know at your age you're gonna have some sleep. moment, young man. Hey, Pop. In this family, we talk to each other. We don't mumble under our breath. Come here. <clears throat> I'd like to know what happened in town this afternoon. Nothing happened. I was just having a, f a little fun, that's all. I don't like the idea of a son of mine brawling around town like a drunken cowboy. Now, Pa, I wasn't drunk and I wasn't brawling. If you two are gonna tell it, why don't you tell it straight? You know, if you don't start using a decent tone of voice with me, I might just have to give you that punch in the jaw I owe you. Yeah, why don't you start right now? That's just enough out of both of you. Paul, little Joe's been spoiling for a fight for three weeks. Why don't you let him have it? Well, come on, that goes for you too. Now, just a minute. This'll go for you three. If you can't talk to each other without fighting, get on up to bed. Now, go on. Not you, Joseph. I want to talk to you. Now, what's this all about? What do you mean? You know what I mean. You're spending Quite a lot of time away from the Ponderosa lately. I'd like to know why. Why can't I have some fun without the whole family jumping on me? I'm not jumping on you. Sure, I think everybody should have a little fun. 
but at the proper times and with the proper companions. I don't know. Oh, it's because I'm the youngest or what? No matter what I want to do or where I want to go, there's Hoss and Adam, ready to tell me what to do and what not to do. And help? Oh, yeah, help, whether I want it or not. Well, don't you think we ought to help each other? Not all the time, Pa. I've spent my whole life on the Ponderosa seeing the same old faces and doing the same old things. I'd always figured that the Ponderosa was your future as well as that of your brother's. But how can I prove if I'm good at anything by myself? Joe, you don't have to prove yourself to us. I'm not trying to prove myself to you, Pa. I'm trying to prove myself to me. And what is it you're trying to prove? I don't know whether, whether I'm good enough, whether I'm old enough, or whether I'm smart enough to do something by myself without three people waiting there to help me every time I stub my toe. Pa, it's not that I don't appreciate what you... <laughs> well, I guess every young man wants to. I got in his own. It's just that father doesn't like to face up to it. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what gets into me sometimes. I, I, mean, I get restless or something. I don't know. Hey, what are you doing here? Huh? When you were in town, you must have heard about that new mine they're opening up on the other side of Sun Mountain. Yeah. Well, Bert Crawford of the Sun Mountain Company is asking for bids to supply the timbering. Bids? Will Povey was in town lining the men up. He says he's got that contract in the bag. Mm. I guess he will have, as usual. Yeah. Hey, what's this, this little circle you got here? Hmm? Hey, didn't that stand of fur right above Buckhorn Meadow? Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's, you know, that's 10 miles closer to the mine than any timber Will Povey's gonna bring in. You're not thinking of bidding, are you? Well, I'd sure like to. But as Adam points out, most of that 10 miles is straight up and down. It's, it, it's too tough a job. Anyway, we've got enough to keep us busy right here at home. Yeah, that's, uh, that's something else I wanted to say. I, I haven't been pulling my share of the load here at the ranch, and I'm going to change that starting tomorrow. Well, I'm for bed. How about you? No, I think I'll just stay up and read for a while, but I, I don't worry. I'll get to bed in time and get up early and start working. Let's up. Good night, Pa. Been up all night? Yeah, well, I have. Here, take a look. I got it all figured out. You got what figured out? How to get that buckhorn fur to the Sun Mountain mine and beat Will Povey's oh, price. Oh, now, Joe. Well, Adam and Hoss went up. What? I can do it. I've got it figured. All the figures right here. Look. Uh, what's this? It's the most papers I've seen you with since you was in school. And up early, too. Well, Joe's decided that he's going to bid on that Sun Mountain timber contract for us. A timber contract? Well, we'd agree it was too big a risk. Yeah, what about Will Povey? Yeah, what about Will Povey? I thought about Povey. I'll underbid him by plenty and still make a good profit. Well, you know Povey can play pretty rough. That's fine with me, too. He wants to play rough, I'll hire a crew that plays rougher. Yeah? Who you got in mind? I figure for a foreman, Dave Donovan. He's young and he's tough. Donovan? He's a good man, Pa. Well, that doesn't make sense. You're sure you can do it? I know I can do it. Well, I say let Joe do as he wants to. Huh? Good luck, little brother. Thanks. Tell you what, 
I'll get you Jake Weber. He'll make you a great foreman. He's a good woodman, too. Adam, I told you I've already got a foreman, Dave Donovan. All right, I'll take a few days off and help you myself. Hey, yeah, me too. The range can wait, can you, Paul? I don't need any help. Now, look, this is my idea, it's my job, and I want to do it by myself. Is that agreed, Pa? Yeah. Well, see you around. Good luck. Joe? Come here. I want you to do something for me. Well, what's that? Break these. Break these? Mm -hmm. All right. <coughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> you wouldn't think they'd... Holy... Well, I can't do it, bud. That's right. Now, they're together like this. You can't break them. But... Singly, they can be broken. By himself, each one of us can be broken. Never let pride stand in your way, son. We're all here, if you need us. I'll remember that part. Everybody get started on this idea. Those trees aren't going to cut themselves. <laughs> Mr. Povey. Bert, here's my bid. Uh, getting in just under the wire, six minutes. What's old Hawkins doing out here from San Francisco? He's just looking around. I'll still make the final decision, Will. I'm counting on that. This is an important contract. You've got the low bid. You're as good as in. If you want your cut, I'd better be. I think I'm gonna just check my figures over on this bid, make sure I got everything correct before I turn it in. Man, you're as fidgety as a fox in a forest fire. I know I am. Oh. You bidding? Uh-huh. Cutting it kind of fine, aren't you? Bid close any minute now. Yeah, well, I'll make it. Kind of young to be bidding on a big contract like this. Look, d do me a favor. Don't, don't don't talk to me right now. I'm trying to add these figures up. It's kind of hard for me. All right? Seventeen times seven. Hundred nineteen. Thanks. At your bid. Uh huh. Yep. Awful low, isn't it? No, it's an honest bid. About time Sun Mountain got one. I don't follow that, son. It's real simple. They've been getting built out of their timber contracts for a long time. Well, now, wouldn't the folks that run the company put a stop to that sort of thing? Hmm? No, you mean stop it. What do they know about it? The company's probably run by some fat old money bag sitting behind a desk in San Francisco. Couldn't tell you beans about the mining business. Bid's closed. Uh-oh. Yep. Wait a minute, got one more. I'm afraid that bid's too late. What do you mean, too late? I've, I've been here all the time. I was just rechecking my figures. Bid's acceptable, Mr. Crawford. Yes. Yes, of course. Well, Mr. Hawkins, president of Sun Mountain, and I will now examine the bids. Gentlemen, we'll announce our decision in a few minutes.
Your papers, young man. I don't know what your name is, mister, but I want to thank you a lot. The name's Hawkins. You look kind of sick. Oh, no, I'm fine. I'm in great shape. It's called the president of the mining company and old fat money bags. Gather round, gentlemen. <sighs> Mr. Crawford and I have examined all the bids. For instance, Mr. Povey here has offered a very good price. Well, I've always tried to give Sun Mountain the best deal I can, Mr. Hawkins. Crawford here can tell you that. Yes, indeed. This time, I'm afraid it isn't quite good enough. We have a few that are somewhat lower. In fact, Joseph Cartwright here is considerably below you, Mr. Povey. Well, he can deliver Ponderosa Pine, Mr. Hawkins, but the contract calls for fur. And that's what I intend to deliver. Well, you're not talking about that stand of fur up above Buckhorn Meadow, are you? Yeah, I might be. Well, you'd never get it out. That country goes straight up and down between the mine and there. Is that true, Mr. Cartwright? Yes, sir, that's true, but I've taken that into consideration in my bid. Mr. Hawkins, you can't take this... Quiet, please. I like your spunk, young man, and your price. Joseph Cartwright wins the contract. Thank you, sir. See that you deliver that timber, young man. Don't worry, you can count on me. And, uh... You're, you're a lot thinner than I pictured you. Good luck, son. I'm sorry, Will. I did my best. Yeah, I bet you. Uh, this is liable to cost you quite a bit of money. Both of us. Unless we can do something about it. You son of a gun, you did it! Well, Will, why, here's this. Like I said, it's a lot of money. Joe Cartwright! Say, that bit of yours came as quite a surprise to me, young fella. Well, uh, you know, Mr. Crawford, I kind of got the idea you didn't want me to get that contract. Ah, uh, whatever's best for the company. I'm glad to hear you say that. We'll do a good job for you. Fine. Now, just as soon as you post the performance bond, we'll sign the contract. Post the what? Performance bond. $5,000 cash. So, wait a minute. There's nothing about that in the contract. Mr. Hawkins didn't even mention it. He didn't have to. It's company policy, standard procedure in all our contracts. Well, you can ask him yourself if you want to. You do have the $5,000, do not you? You wouldn't have time to ride out to the Ponderosa and get it. I need it by sundown. That's company policy, too. I think I understand. Okay, you get your money by sundown. Well, looks like I don't have a job after all, huh? Don't worry, you got a job so as we get to the bank. You know, I think I'm going to enjoy seeing our man gets his hands on 5,000 great big dollars. You know something? I'm going to... I kind of enjoy seeing it myself. Let's go. If your father wants to co-sign the loan, of course you can have it. You can have twice that amount. Mr. Simpson, I don't have time for that. Isn't there some way? Couldn't I make it a personal loan? <laughs> I'm afraid that's something else again. What do you want the money for? For a performance bond on the Sun Mountain timber contract. How'd you get that contract away from Will Povey? Yeah, by underbidding him. More than $10,000. I'd say you made a very foolish bid. Why, the wagons alone are... I don't need wagons. Gonna build a flume. A flume? That's right, I'm gonna build a flume right down to the Truckee River. Here. Yeah, I'm gonna float those logs right down to the mine. It's gonna work, I figured it all out. Oh, 
You know, that might work. Did your brother Adam figure this out for you? My brother Adam had nothing to do with it. I figured this out all by myself. Well, do I get the loan or not? I'll grant the loan. But remember, if you don't deliver, you're out $5,000, plus the interest. I'll deliver. Don't you worry about it, I'll deliver. You, uh, you have your receipt book with you, Crawford? Come on, I got a lot of things to do. Let me have the receipt. Yeah, well, you heard the man, Crawford. Count the money and give him a receipt. Yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> hey, you know, I don't think I'm ever gonna get over the look on that Crawford's face when I handed him that $5,000 in cash. He never thought I was gonna raise that money. Why do you figure that? I mean, why? It's a lot of money, that's why. Your name's Cartwright, ain't it? Well, that had nothing to do with it. It was my idea about the flume that sold him on giving me that loan. Ah, oh, come on, Joe. You know you had your family behind you. What kind of chance would I have raising $5,000? Yeah, what difference does it make? We got the money, didn't we? I want you to go out and give me some men. Sure. First thing in the morning. First thing in the morning, nothing. You're gonna do it tonight. First thing in the morning, we're going to work. All right, all right. I'll need some money. What for? You know, spread around, buy some drinks, yeah, get the men. you're right. Oh, it's getting thinner. Say, uh, while you're in there, do you think maybe I could get about a $50 advance? I'm a little short myself. I don't see why not. You're my foreman, aren't you? See you later, Jack. Right. Good evening. I'm, uh, I'm Jake Weber. Jake, yeah. John I, Cartwright. Nice to see you. I heard tell you got that Sun Mountain contract. I'm open to work right now. Well, I've already got a foreman, Dave Donovan, here. All right. Excuse me, I got some work to do. All right, good luck. He's a pretty good man. Well, that's as may be. You're gonna need a couple of straw bosses, and uh, I need to work. Jake, tell me something. My brother Adam sent you? Nope. My pa? If you don't want me, just say so. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jake. It's got nothing to do with it. I can use you. Say the word, and I can fetch along a lot of my old crew. Good, that's great. I can use every man I can get. I'm gonna camp tomorrow morning up in Buckhorn Meadow. I'll see you on the job, boss. I'll have the men start setting up. Fine, right. it's good to have you with us. Thanks. Mm. Thank you, boys, one and all. Now, you are what I call a pretty fair country poker player. Yep. Cards are like the old reliable meat in a pot to me. Yeah, well, it cleans me. Bar, keep more whiskey over here. Hey, you're not leaving so early, are you? Well, it stopped being early two hours ago. Holy smoke, I clean forgot. I was supposed to be getting men to fill a payroll here. Say, you fellas wouldn't want to come to work for me, would you? No. You better watch your language. No, I'm serious. The work's not hard. Top dollar. Hey, wait, wait, wait. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give a bottle of whiskey to every man who signs on with me. Well, why didn't you say that in the first place? Bring him on! I wondered when you'd be along. All right, what's the barrier for, Povey? Well, you see, I bought myself a piece of timber that goes through here. Now, I wouldn't want to close off a road, but seeing as how I own it, you wouldn't blame me for charging toll, would you? Right, you name your price, I'll pay it. I figure $25 a wagon ought to do it. I figure a poke in the nose would Take do... Take it easy, Dave. $25? Well, that's just fine and dandy, Poby. Get it. Okay, open it up. 
It's going to cost you $25 every time one of your wagons comes through here. And you're going to need a lot of wagons. I hope you figured that in your bid. OK, open it up. Open it up. Be careful that log doesn't hit you in the face when it swings back now. He's bluffing. What makes you think so? At $25 a wagon load, that would break him. I saw that bid. He hasn't got enough margin. Lux ain't everything in a working man, Joe. They're spry and full of spirit. I can smell that. I'll whip them in the shape. You'll see. There's no work in them. I know they're kind. You let me worry about that, mister. Neither you or me has got this deadline, Donovan. I'm the foreman. I can handle it. Brother Adam and send him packing in five minutes. My brother Adam's not bossing this job, Jake. I am. All right, call them in together. I want to talk to them. All right, you men, gather on. All right, let's Come get on. on your feet. Boss let's go. To talk to you. Come on. Right, we got a pretty tough job ahead of us. We're going to build a flume from here to the Truckee River. I'm a fair man. I'm not going to ask any of you to do anything I wouldn't do myself. But I do want a dollar's work for a dollar's pay. We got a deadline on this job. We can meet it if we all pitch in together. We can meet it with time to spare. We're going to work in two crews. Loggers will work under Jake Weber. That's the you men under Dave Donovan. And there'll be no drinking on the job. Any questions? All right, let's get to work. All right, come on, let's go. All right, men, let's go back to work. On a double. Dave, you see the bottle? Sure. You must be dry after a big speech like that. Hey, what's the big idea? You heard what I just said, no drinking. It goes for everybody. You're getting kind of hard-nosed, aren't you, boy? I'm expecting you to get the same way. Come on, Foreman. I thought you were going to whip these men into shape. Sure. Maybe it's just because we don't feel so good. If you don't feel good, go pick up your time. Now, come on, get moving. Dave! Dave Donovan! Come on, move. Yeah, Joe? Look, Dave, I don't want 100 yards of this flume finished by tonight. 100 yards? It's impossible. It's not impossible if you keep these men working. Now, let's get going. All right. OK, you men, get your backs in turn. Let's go! Because he's a car driver, he thinks he can push everybody around. How much longer are you going to put up with him? To pay it. That's tomorrow. Ah, moving this big stuff is mighty slow work, Joe. We're falling behind. Yeah, I know, Jake. We can use some more horses. That sure would help. All right, I'll leave right away. If I don't get back by tomorrow, I want you to pay them in anyway. All right. 
Yes, I don't think them Donovan men are earning their pay. Jake, don't worry about Dave's men. They're gonna do their share of the work. If you say so. Hey, Weber. Put shot on timber down at our end. Keep those logs moving. How's it going, Foreman? Pretty good. Day to get a couple more teams of horses. I want you to keep the men working just the way they are. Right, you can count on me. Boys, you so associate with the right people, and lady luck begins to shine. Well, sit down, boss. We're celebrating payday. All right, suppose you all get back to work. That goes for you, too, Dave. Hey, wait a minute. This is old Donovan, remember? Dave, you're drunk. Now, don't give me any trouble. Don't give you any trouble? How does it feel to be a big man? Money. Giving orders, snapping your fingers and everybody jumping. I don't know what's got into you, but I'm going to say it just one more time. All of you, get back to work. <laughs> we ain't through celebrating yet, are we, boys? <laughs> it looks like I just lost a foreman. Pack up your things and get out. All right. If I leave, my boys go with me. All right, any of you that want to stay and work, that's fine. If not, you better follow him. Well, I'm staying. Come on, let's get back to work. Cart ride. Lots of luck. You're gonna need it. Uh... <laughs> All right, man, let's get to it. Jerry, take your men and finish up down to the south board. Smitty, you and your men get your tools and follow me. Come on, now, let's go. Let's go. There he is, Paul, just like I told you. I've been keeping an eye on him up here. What do you think? Still has a long way to go. Think we ought to help him? No, that's for him to decide. So you let that little great big Joe Cartwright fire you, huh? Can't cut with him, can you, huh? Cartwright's got all the money. Run you right out of town, huh, Dave? Cartwrights are gonna come in town with a gun and go, tell you, ain't nothing. I heard Cartwright fired you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he tossed me a crumb and he took it away. I thought he was one of us, but I made a mistake. He belongs up there in that big house. Well, I thought you two were good friends. Me? I ain't got a big house and a stand of timber and a magic name. I'm just riffraff to the Cartwrights. You know, I learned a long time ago that this is the only true friend a man's got. How would you like a lot of these true friends? What's your proposition? $500 now and $500 when Joe Cartwright forfeits his bond. Think you can do it? Mr. Povey, 
You just bet on a sure thing. You with me? All the way. Make sure you got them all secured good, Bobby. Right, Joe. Hey, look at that, Jake. Another half a mile and we can start the logs rolling. I can tell you now, Joe. I never thought you'd do it. I want to thank you and the men for sticking by me. Thanks. Hey, Brennan! What's the matter? You getting tired? I'm saving my strength to beat your head in when this job's finished. <laughs> yeah, me too. All right, you both get a chance when the job's finished. We can all sleep for about three months. Everybody down! Come on, clear off the floor and we're sitting ducks up here! Let's get cover. Cover me. I'm gonna go take care of that flume. Somebody shoot at you and not do anything about it? You men stay right where you are. I hired you as loggers, not gunmen. There's only another half mile of flume to build. We can make it if we fight them off. Jake, I'm not gonna risk the lives of these men just to fill a lumber contract. I thought it was you. How's it going, son? trouble and I know what to do with. Tell me about it. I don't know what good it'll do to talk about it now. Hmm? Might do some good. I told you my trouble's a time or two. Yeah. Well, I... I made every mistake in the book. I trusted Donovan. I thought I could handle Povey. Well, I handled him all right. He hired some gunmen, they blew up a section of the flume. Anyone hurt? I had one man winged. I told Jake and the men to quit. I, I couldn't ask them to risk their lives. Hey, Joe, you saw your horse out there when we come out of the barn. We've uh, run into a little trouble. 
What are you going to do, give up? It's not what I want to do. I just don't have any choice. I can't do it alone. Well, Joe, uh, we're still here, if you need us. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't got nothing to do for three or four days. Yeah, well, free as a bird. Yeah, I got about a dozen men sitting around doing nothing but collecting wages. Well, yeah, well let's go, then. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Povey, Crawford, bartender. I'd have been here a little sooner, but I've been out doing a little celebrating. I'm here for the other 500. Well, you almost made it, Donovan. Well, what do you mean by that? That whole car ride crew moved out when I blasted that flume. The trouble is, you're only half right. Crawford here went up to check on Cartwright's progress. Well, his crew left all right. But while you were out celebrating, they've come back. Not only Weber and his crew, but the whole Cartwright family and all their ranch hands. His family? But Joe would never ask them. You just made another mistake. He asked them, all right. Just hold that second 500. I'll get them. You figuring on taking that whole crowd on by yourself? One at a time. You must want that extra 500 awful bad. No. No, it's not the 500. It's a personal thing now. Well, you know, I think Adam's idea will work. Yeah. Boss, Adam, how about getting started on that A-frame right away? Right. Jake, you should take these group of men down to the unfinished lower section and get it finished right away. All right, boys, let's get going. I better get her blocking falls from camp. I'll get them. You get down there and make sure they get started. Hey, Jake. Tell them and thanks for coming back. We're glad to be back, Joe. Hey, you. Uh, how about being foreman for me while I'm gone? Sure, I'd be glad to, boss. <laughs> All right, you heard what the boss said. Let's get to work. Family man. What do you want, Dave? Well, now, I thought I wanted some money. But now I want more than that. All right, exactly what is it that you want? I wonder what that fine family of yours is going to think when they come up here and find you. Of course, your pa's got two other sons. He won't miss you much. All right, Dave, come on. Come on.
fight. Thanks, bud. What about this on? I figured I could take you. Finally had to bring your family in, didn't you? That's right, I called them. I guess that's where I made my mistake. I figured they'd let you down. The way my family let me down. Will you knock it off? I'm sick and tired of hearing the way your family let you down. Did you ever stop to think for one minute maybe you let them down? But you might have let a lot of people down. The only help you're gonna understand you're gonna get from Sheriff Coffee. He did it, boy. No, we did it, Pa. Look at that. Well, I guess you won't be needing us anymore. What do you mean I won't be needing you anymore? We're not the three greatest workers in the world, but I can't beat the price. <laughs> <laughs>